what is the date today? Is it the... Oh my goodness. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to my studio. My name is Michael Markowski, and today we're going to make a painting by one of my favorite artists, as always. But this isn't just any artist. This is arguably the artist, the greatest artist of all time. Looks like I'm a tad bit out of focus there. We'll fix that at some point in my shirt is getting tighter for some reason. I don't know. Maybe it's all of those croissants I get uh, our daughter for <laughs> for lunch. Okay. So where should we begin here? We've got a big day. So I think what I want to do is show a few things right off the top. Looks like we got kind of a funky internet for a second here. Okay. So, if you look in the, uh, what is it? Let's close that. Yeah. Um, if you look in the, the video description down below, you'll see a link to the private Facebook group, of which this is it here, and you'll see that um, I post not only the links to each video and a little description about them, but there are can we see. Here's, you know, the all of the artwork that people just like yourself that are watching right now are producing. So you get to see, you know, other people trying to do exactly what you're doing. And, you, and I think it's really cool. There's a great community of people, super supportive, people who are creating their own artwork and uploading them to the, to the Facebook and getting feedback from other people. There's also another link to... A, uh, a Dropbox folder on and you can click on the Dropbox folder and you'll see some of the previous artists that we've done in this series we did a whole 40 episode how to paint series right before this so if you don't see artists that you like I guarantee if you go back a few months you'll find a whole bunch of other painters um, and the links to that are all on my YouTube page you're already here on my YouTube page so you could find it there click on the Leonardo da Vinci you'll see a few things you'll see a tracing of uh, the Leonardo uh, da Vinci's Mona Lisa and here is the original now obviously my tracing of it this is something I did this is my interpretation of the original you're welcome to print out the original and trace over it if you like to try to get yours um, but I've tried to simplify it so you can take this you could print it out onto a regular sheet of paper and then we're going to transfer it onto a canvas here. So you, I'm using these uh, uh, let's see here. these nine by twelve U.S. Art Supply. Um, when we began doing this, I was using canvases I got from the dollar store, and I've got a bin here full of forty or probably about fifty of them by the end. Uh, that we did and they worked really well the dollar store canvases are fantastic these ones are an extra dollar the link to the Amazon um, where you can or buy them directly from Amazon is in the video description below I, th I think these are just a little bit better and for twice the amount of money for an extra dollar they're a little bit more sturdy they don't warp so much and um, they hold up to if you put extra a lot of water in your paint it's unlikely that they're gonna bend and that kind of stuff okay so we're gonna transfer this image onto the canvas I'm gonna show you how to do this sometimes I do this right before the episode begins but uh, it's probably gonna be a while before I do that again just cuz right before this I, I run our daughter down to uh, our nanny share five blocks away and then I run right back fire up all of the cameras and everything and I'm Whew, out of breath by the time I get here. Well, let me just show you. Uh, just I, I, I know I've said this before, and these links are in the video description below. This is carbon paper. You can get graphite paper. They're basically the same thing. Um, and you can also get white. You can get green and yellow. 
a great place to look for these if you can't find them at your art supply store is at fabric stores because people use this a lot for transferring patterns onto clothes. Um, I'm going to use a new sheet of, of uh, carbon paper. I usually use the same one over and over and over again, but I've used the same one over and over and over again to the point where it, uh, it, it may not work as effectively. But you can get probably four or five uses out of each sheet, depending on how many lines you put on here. Now, I'm going to paint the entire Mona Lisa painting today, which um, I've, I've been contemplating, should we just do her face? Personally, I think the most interesting parts of the Mona Lisa, or La Jaconde, um, are the background and her hands, and then her face. That's just how I feel about this painting. We're going to talk all about the history of the painting and, and who Leonardo was and what makes him so special as we go here. But um, we got a lot of stuff to do, so I want to get this kind of be begun here. Also, see, I'm kind of just shifting the paint this down just a little bit. Let me see. I'm going to zoom out here. Let's see how that fits on there. So you can see I just moved this piece of paper down just a little bit. Um so that there might be a little bit of extra space on the top there. And of course, there'll be a little bit of extra space down here. So let's just trace all of uh, this down. I'm not gonna worry so much about making it perfect. I just wanna get the general um, composition where these major details are. Um, kind of a little interesting fact about uh, this painting by Leonardo is there's there are some people I, I remember reading when I was in college and an essays claiming that this painting um, is really historically important because it's one of the first landscape paintings that this background in the background is um, one of the first landscapes which is kind of an interest I I have thought about that many, many times, and I, I was writing for years a book on landscape painting, which in my own research would kind of put that into doubt, but there are a number of people who, who really find the landscape in behind the, this uh, woman. And another thing, is this actually a woman or is this Leonardo in drag? That's, there's a whole other, I mean, I'm not kidding you. There are some people who qu believe that quite firmly that this is actually um, Leonardo da Vinci himself in this painting um, and not uh, the wife of um, one of his patrons but and there is there's a whole other dispute about who this person actually is if it's not Leonardo which I think is kind of doubtful but I have seen some people do some pretty interesting things where they overlap um, some of Leonardo, like a, uh, a sketch that Leonardo did of himself with this painting on top of this painting. And it, it it's possible. I mean, it's, I would, I, I would say it's highly, highly unlikely. Although I do think, you know, artists, I, I think he probably maybe as he was maybe drawing it thought like, Oh, that's kind of an interesting kind of uh, happy accident, as Bob Ross might say, that this, uh, that the image of uh, the sitter of, of this woman looks a lot like himself. And he may have made some changes to amplify that. Um, because this painting took him, at the very least, three years to paint. <laughs> And possibly some people say that he worked on it all the way until 1517, uh, towards the very end of his life. Did he spend almost, well, 15 or so years on this painting? Um, that's also highly possible. Um, if I remember the kind of the history of, like he painted this like 1503 he's kind of at his prime and he is 
Um, Leonardo was a difficult person, I think. He, he was clearly incredibly talented. Even at the time, during his lifetime, I think he was acknowledged as, like, a genius. I think the the Medici family, the, the Pope, all of, all of the kind of the most important people at the time knew, like, this guy is perhaps the greatest artist of all time. But he was notorious for not completing artworks, leaving artworks in unfinished states. Um, and he was, as you probably know, like a very famous inventor uh, who invented a lot of really, you know, um, like he invented the helicopter and the parachute and all these different kinds of things. Although, he never published his his research or his results. They stayed in his journals. So... They didn't actually, it's not like he invented the helicopter and then people directly built helicopters based on his research and his sketches. He just sort of dreamed them up, drew them in his sketchbook, and then 500 years later, they actually built these things. Can you imagine if, if uh, Leonardo had actually, those helicopters and tanks and all these other th inventions he made actually were built during his lifetime. I'd be kind of curious to see what kind of world we'd be living in today. Anyway, um, Leonardo was a big inventor um, and also a... He was constantly testing his materials and trying different techniques and different kinds of paint. And, uh, some worked really well and some didn't. Most famously, the Last Supper painting, which is maybe uh, his second most famous artwork, that painting was falling apart while he was painting it. And, um, he sort of kind of just gave up. To, I mean, he... I think he, it was kind of flaking off and falling apart because he was trying to use these different experimental techniques and, and trying to kind of invent his own paint. And it was falling apart while he was painting on it and just sort of booked it out of town at some point, which did certainly not please his... Um, I think it was like a friary or that he was making it for. I think it was, it was like in the cafeteria of... Of like, um, you know, like, uh, yeah, like where monks would uh, would hang out in, right? So let's just take a look at this here. Okay. So right now, it's you know we've got an image on here. Some of the details of the face are a little bit wacky, but we are gonna paint over all of this in due time. You can also see on the back side of my tracing, I've got this cool reversed image. I always like to say to people, rather than just throwing this out or into the recycling bin, you could color this in. We've already got a little bit of color on it. You could give it to um, a younger person in your family and they could color it in for you. And therefore, you know, if you're, especially if you've got little kids who are uh, like, like we do, they could be, they could make their own version of the Mona Lisa while you're working on this one. Uh, today is episode 150. Um, oh, Josh says there, how, how do you get the traceable paper for the Mona Lisa? So, right, if you print this out, you can use the, you can order you know, carbon paper or graphite paper from, you know, uh, Amazon. There's a link to that in the video description below. Or you can get it at usually pretty much every art supply store. I got this stuff from a, a pretty good dollar store down the street from our house. It kind of stocks a bunch of art supplies as well. Um, if you are in a total pickle and you don't have any... Let me see if I've got... I've demonstrated this a few times. If you want to see how, how I've done this from beginning to end, we did this with the Warhol painting. Let me see if we go back in time. So here's one. 
This is our Thomas Kincaid painting we did. And in order to do this, what I did is I just took a pencil, regular HB pencil, and just scribbled all over the back, just like that. And then you can do just exactly what we just did, right? Just trace over top of it with the pencil, and it's going to transfer that graphite or carbon onto the canvas, right? So I could have done that today, and it would have worked just as well. It's, um, it's the poor man's version of carbon paper and graphite paper. It sometimes has varied results depending on how well, because if you miss a few little gaps, you might um, have a little bit of a problem. You might miss a few details, but it works just as well. Uh, <laughs> I see uh, Deborah saying, um, Michael, my orchid is, uh, my George O'Keefe orchid that we painted last week is still not finished. I'm like Leonardo. Yes, you're in good company, right? <laughs> if, if you don't finish today's painting, just think, well, you know, I've got another, like, two and a half years to work on this, just like Leonardo. So, you know, I, I'll just... <laughs> okay, so let's get some materials out. I got my, my uh, palette here. And I'm just going to put my labels on here. I just, you know, I, I get this, like... This Velcro, and I find this works great. I'm super happy with the way this turned out. And you can see I've labeled it. Let's see. Um, these different colors, and let's put the colors on our palette here. So all of the colors that we need. Can, everything we need can fit inside of a shoebox. So let's get these paints out. The other things that we're going to use include some slow dry medium and glazing fluid. Personally, I prefer the satin glazing fluid, which is satin or matte, is the same thing, as opposed to gloss uh, or pearl glazing liquid just because it goes on and it's not shiny. I always prefer matte materials than, than glossy materials, but that is just me. I would say another reason why I think matte materials work really well is that if you're gonna add a lot of water into your paint, water is going to, to reduce the shine of your acrylic paints a lot. So if you're adding like gloss and, and water, then you might have parts of your painting that are kind of glossy and then matte and glossy and matte, and it can be a little bit distracting. You can solve that problem by varnishing your painting afterwards or putting a clear coat of clear acrylic over top of it. But if you don't, you can have kind of a thing, if you're not looking at it straight on, that parts of it are glossy, not glossy. So I prefer, just keep the whole thing not glossy, and then I don't have to worry about any of that stuff at all. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, and if you want to do, I see Josh, you really like that Thomas Kincaid drawing. If you want to do the Thomas Kincaid drawing and painting, there's, what about, when did we do that? I think it was actually right around Christmas we did that painting, right? So you can find that in uh, um, on, on the uh, YouTube channel here. And can I use oil paint for this study? You can, sh yeah, absolutely. You can use oil paint for this. Um, it's a little bit of a different process, obviously, uh, but it will work. Um, because essentially, what we're going, what we're doing, at least in today's painting, is we're we're kind of using our acrylics like oil paints. Uh, I mean, that's a there, there are certainly differences, as you will see, especially in these this first step, because what we're about to do in a couple seconds here is we're going to start putting on some paint in the background, or we'll, we're going to cover this entire surface with color. We're going to put two colors, one in the background, one in the foreground, which you can do with acrylic if you let it dry, and then you can paint oil paint over top of your acrylic. Just as a rule, you cannot paint acrylic over top of oil paint, right? Because it won't stick. It, it will probably look okay for a couple of days or weeks, but after a little while, it's gonna peel or crack and 
fall right off. Okay, so let's put paint on the palette here. Um, you know, one of the, I mean, there's a, there's lots of reasons why uh, Leonardo and really all, you know, painters of the classical period were, you know, incredible. Um, is because their palettes were really, really, really limited. They were painting um, with a very small number of colors. And um, whereas we have a lot, all of these, all these colors here that we're using with these Amsterdam or Liquitex or golden all of these paints are synthetic they're all made in a laboratory nowadays and there's there um, uh, we can pretty much ensure that every tube of, of if you know let's say this tube of what is this azo yellow deep right that I'm using for my warm yellow somebody in Vancouver where I am and somebody in Toronto or New York or Singapore or Tokyo, they're going to have pretty much the exact same color that I'm using, right? So you can follow these tutorials easily. If YouTube existed 500 years ago and Leonardo was teaching this class, he, everything that he, all the paints he would be using were mixed by hands and sourced locally, or they were shipped to, uh, where would he have been I think, when he made this painting? been in like maybe it was in Rome at the time uh, so there would have been some uh, some colors were obtainable but they could be prohibitively expensive um, and so a painting that he made using specific kind of ingredients could look very different than somebody in the next town just a few few kilometers or miles down the road who was using even the same ingredients, but since they were all organic, they could be slightly different. Anyway, long story, I could go into all these details over and over and over. I love talking about all this stuff. Okay. Um, so let's, what I want to do here, let's look at, let's look at them side by side. All right, let's look at this one first right here. So here's the actual painting itself. And we're going to apply two colors here. We're going to apply a cool um, blue into the background. And probably like, how, why cool blue? Right? We've talked, we did a whole episode or a couple of episodes really on warm and cool colors way back in September. So I'm not going to go into really explaining all of that. But if we just sort of look at this area of the painting, and I think what you will see, if you really kind of try to, you know, work your way backwards and imagine some of the first steps, it looks like he's painted a this kind of sky blue and then he's put this glaze of kind of a warm yellow, um, like a yellow ochre or something over top of that blue, right? And then and I, I'm not, again, I'm not exactly sure how he painted this entire painting. This is just m me looking at it and trying to kind of problem solve. Um, and then on the, the foreground figure, it looks like he's painted pretty much just like a, um, a warm yellow, maybe with a little bit of white into it. Right, so the way that Leonardo painted is he made, um, and the reason why it took him so long to paint is that he, he probably put hundreds, if not thousands of layers of very thin paint, which we call glazing or glazes, um, one on top of the other. And these layers of paint are virtually transparent, right? That they virtually make no difference whatsoever but in or but by doing that, he's able to get these incredibly soft transitions from one color to the other. Now, again, that took him years to do. Some again, some people think maybe 15 years to do. 
we're not we don't we're we're a little short on time so we're gonna try to get this done in the next maybe three hours at most if i can help it so let's start painting some colors into the background i see the chat um is going like nuts so that's great let me think so what we want to do i'm going to paint this cool blue i'm going to mix a bunch of white into it and we'll put that in the background so i'm going to go oh, yeah. this is really the only time i use any water so i'm just gonna use this cool blue here oops let's uh So I got my cool blue, right? And I like to kind of just rub it into the brush a bit. And then I'm gonna take a good helping of white paint here. So not only does the white paint, obviously it tints it and makes it uh, lighter but really what white paint also does is it reduces the intensity of the color. So it's no longer as saturated of a color. And the and one of the great reasons for using a desaturated color is if we put it in the background, it's gonna also act like there is some atmosphere in between uh, us and, let's like, say, the faraway mountains, etc. Right. So you saw I just put a little bit of water on there. If I was using oil paints, I would use um, uh, orderless mineral spirits for that kind of a thing. Okay. So now I'm going to take this blue. And I'm just going to brush it over the background. One of the reasons why I put water in there is to kind of dilute it a little bit so that some of these pencil lines are going to make it through. Just going to wipe away some of this here. Now let's, what is that? I'm not even sure what this thing is right here. So I'm always thinking when I'm making these paintings, do I want to keep that? I have an inclination just to, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna make a little change here, but because I, I don't, I don't know what that shape is, so taking it out, boom, gone. <laughs> and you should feel freedom to make any changes that you want to the painting as we go as well. I'm also gonna cut in a little bit closer with uh, my blue over top of her hair a little bit, just because um, we might see some of the background through some of the hair as well, right? And then I always like getting the edges of my painting here. Now, you know, I can see right now, a lot of my pencil lines have disappeared. That might be because I, I had a lot of white in my paint. And if you're afraid of the background disappearing, you can add more water to that color. But add, you could, maybe you can see it as it's starting to dry, and it's going to dry much faster with water in there. That um, background, those pencil lines are going to show up here so in order to facilitate that we can use a hair dryer to blow on here
Okay. Um, okay, so now I'm going to paint this foreground, and that's going to be a much lighter, um, earthy tone here. So let's just get... Um, I'm going to clean this brush off. Bunch of my rags out. This one brush, look at this, keeps, I'm determined to use some, I to do every single painting that we've done over, since back in um, September when we began, I made a deliberate choice to buy the least expensive brushes that I could buy that I was had reasonable confidence would work. Um, so I think we spent... $25 maybe in total on brushes and and for all of these brushes there's a few like this kind of brush you know from Home Depot but and, and the, my toothbrush I don't use it for my teeth anymore um, <clears throat> um, and I'm kind of determined to, to, to paint with some of these cheap brushes all the way until they're uh, at their their final end okay so next we're going to use uh probably trying to decide how much yellow i want to put in i think we're going to do what i'm thinking about right now is how much of a flesh tone do i want to try to mix for her at this moment and how much white do i want to put in i'm a little concerned if i put a lot of white into this color that I'm going to lose a lot of these details. Now, I'm, I lost some detail in the background because I added white to it, but I'm not so concerned because even though I, I did start the episode by saying one of my favorite parts of this painting is the background, I can reasonably recreate some of this just by looking at the original and of course, I also have my drawing that I can kind of keep nearby for any kind of reference. Doing the same thing with the rest of her body, though, might be a bit of a challenge. So what I'm probably going to do here is I'm going to use some warm yellow, but I'm going to add a lot more water to it. So it's going to act like I'm adding white to the paint. It's just that I'm using the white of the canvas to act like white paint. So let's see if this brush, okay. So uh, let's move that off to the side just so you can see mixing this and getting my fingers in the paint. Okay. It's always a good idea just to get your fingers in the paint right off the, the bat. And that way, when your fingers are covered in paint, it's not such a surprise. Okay, so let's put some water on there. Is that enough? Let's just see. And you can see it's gone a little bit green because my water was a little bit blue. But I don't, I'm not super concerned with that. We're, we're going to paint over all of this, remember, right? Okay. That's actually quite good. I, you know, again, this is the same brush I use for this color. So if you're wondering how did I get this bit of a brown color, the re and the reason why it's gone brown is because they're kind of crossing over the neutral core, which just as a reminder, if you're like, what does that mean? Right, so we've, we're mixing this yellow with the cool blue and they're they're moving, they're, they're closer towards the center here. And this center, everything kind of gets gray and brown, right? If I wanted even more of that color, I could have used some warm blue and yellow. I mean, I didn't intentionally try to use any blue at all. I just was a little bit lazy cleaning my brush because, you know, at this stage, we're going to cover everything anyway. I just want a warmer yellow. That's you know, that's the main thing I'm going for at this point. Oh, cool! I see people talking about the digital restoration version of uh, this painting. 
And Deborah posted it to the Facebook group. That's cool. I don't I, I, I don't know if I've actually seen that version of the painting. That's maybe I'll take a look here after while this is drying. Um, now you do want to be careful when you're doing this kind of thing with when I put a lot of water into my paint I could potentially start scrubbing some of the, the pencil marks off right um, so if I'm really scrubbing all over this surface I could potentially get a little bit of um, of uh, the, the pencil marks kind of blending around and changing the color, dirtying it a little bit. So right now it's sort of like I'm staining this canvas here. And the primary, well, there's also, I talk about this all the time. There's many different reasons for doing this. One of which it kind of speeds things up a little bit because um, I've already got a little bit of a color underneath that white. So if I miss, um, and I don't, I, that way if, if I, colors aren't matching up right on, to, you know, next to one another and there's a little bit of color or space in between, instead of white shining through, we'll have some yellow shining through, which just gives it the look of, um, being a little bit more finished. So right now, what I'm trying to do is trying to avoid getting too many streaks, especially right around on her face. Just going to dry my brush off on my sleeve there. Starting to push my luck with all of this brushing over the wet pencil marks, so I'm going to try to finish that ASAP. Okay. It's not a big deal, but if there was like a bunch of big streaks and things on in these areas where her skin is, everything else is going to get darker and darker and darker. Her skin, however, we're going to keep relatively light, so we just want to try to avoid too many streaks in that area. That's pretty cool when you look at, uh, at that painting, um, the original, or, or this restored, digitally enhanced version of the painting. I wonder what these little numbers down here are down there. That's, uh, that's odd. It that almost looks like the, the numbers from, a, if you remember taking photographs on your, on your camera and it would have the date on there. Anyway, so, and thank you, Josh, for... Uh, Bless you there, my 
quick little sneeze while I was painting or using the blow dryer. Okay, oops. Okay, so our next step is. Uh, it's always like, what is? The, what should the next step be? I think I did paint this a little bit dark. Not such a problem. It should have probably been a little bit lighter. Um, the, you know, ideally, it probably would have would have been about this level of um, transparency. But again, like I always say, this, this show should be I should, should be subtitled. Maybe I should wear a T-shirt like uh, "What Not to Do." Like this is everything. Everything I'm about to do is exactly what you should not do. So don't listen to anything I say. Um, or listen to what I say, don't do what I do, maybe, um, or, or tune in like 20 minutes late and then you can kind of just watch me make mistakes and then fix my mistakes. Okay. So, um, so Josh is saying I can't do the tracing. Um, so I'm going to use the sketching uh, skills, which works just fine. You know, in the very beginning when we were doing our um, painting class, we did everything by sketching. We eyeballed everything and kind of. Um, but when we got a little bit more complicated, I think doing this kind of tracing method I think saves a little bit of time for people. So, okay, now let's think about what we want to do next. Generally. When I'm painting, I like to work all the way around. I kind of go around or around. So I think hmm. one thing you know I think I'm gonna do this time, which I don't normally do, is I think I'm gonna darken some of the features on her face, like lips and eyes and nostrils, etc. Um, so that when we start glazing over top of it, it's a little bit easier for people to see those features. One of the things, and this is just, uh, you know, uh, that's not the way that I would paint the painting on my own, but I also am aware that I'm sort of leading and teaching people to paint. And sometimes some people, when you're getting started, if we obliterate some of those details, it gets a little bit trickier to do. So let's do some of the darker parts of this painting so that you don't lose the plot halfway through. I think that might be helpful for some people. Okay, so how are we gonna make a darker color? We're gonna do this a few times, but let's maybe start right off the beginning. So if we wanna make a darker color, obviously we could just break out the black. But if I look at this painting, I don't know if I see any black in the painting at all anyway. Maybe, maybe a few possibly in here. You could, maybe that's black. I don't know. Everywhere else we have like really, really, really dark blues and really, really dark browns. Um, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to mix a really, really dark brown. So how can we do that? Well, one way we can do that is we can, basically making a brown is mixing yellow, red, and blue together. And, and the kind of brown, the darkness of the brown, just depends on how much of each of those three colors you add together. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some warm yellow especially because it's going to be in the foreground, so I like warmer colors in the foreground. I'm going to take some warm red and mix that together. So then we have an orange, right? And then we can, we're going to mix, let's say we're going to take some of this cool blue, we'll put that in there. And again, they're almost opposite one another on the color wheel. So look how kind of this color looks pretty dark as it is. To make it even darker, let's take an, the other blue, our uh, warm blue. So now we've got like just a whole bunch of colors in here and they're all crisscrossing back and forth over that neutral core. And so they look really, really, you know, kind of gross. And they, they've lost all their saturation looks there's a little bit 
greenish looking. So if I want it to be a little bit uh, more of a reddish color, let's add a little bit of red in here. Now it goes a little bit more of a reddish brown as opposed to a greenish brown. And you could just use black if you want to, but I'm always trying to teach people how to how to mix all of these colors without like um, resorting to, to black because black is just is like a is such a dominant color that it's going to obliterate so many details. So where's my tiny brush? I'm going to use my smallest brush here. And uh, I'm not even going to bother putting any uh, fluid or anything in it because I'm just going to add little dots to help me remember where some of these details are. So let's... Um, Let's go in here and I'm going to go uh, on her, in fact, let's zoom in, oops, and then let's see if I can get that close. going to go in here kind of paint some of these features I usually do this as one of my final steps when I'm painting but again this might not be this might make it everyone's lives a little bit easier especially kind of beginner artists Here's now the, the folds of the eyelid I'm painting. I'm not going to do any shading or anything on there, all of which we will do. But let's look at her nose here. And everything we're doing too, we can modify, change, darken, lighten, brighten. All that stuff later on. Okay. That might be... That's probably good enough for right now. Well, actually, you know what? Let's uh, get just a little bit underneath her eye. Just kind of little kind of bags under her eyes a little bit. Okay. So next step, actually, you know, while we're right here, we've got this pretty dark brown. I think we could use this dark brown. We could start painting her hair in while we're right here. Might as well. Um, so, I'm just going to take, this is my brown here, if it's a little bit too dark, maybe let's put, a, I'm just going to mix it a, a, a kind of a version of it next door. I'm going to take this, I just took some warm red and warm yellow, and with the same color, let's just scoop a little bit in there. It's, it's a dark brown, but not nearly as dark. We've kind of diluted the, the two blues that were in there. So let's just, I'm going to take, uh, actually, no, let's, I'm gonna, I was going to use my small brush again, but you know, I forget that I don't have three more years to work on this. <laughs> I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit here. So I'm just going to take this brown that I just mixed, and I'm going to paint it 
right over all these pen these pencil lines here. And I can go over top of the blue a little bit if I want. It's got to be your shoulders, obviously. Right? And then I'm just going to kind of take my brush and clean that up. Let's do the same thing on this side here. I'm sort of taking my time as I'm shaping her face. transition back to my smaller brush so I can get some of this these details in thinking, you know, doing this painting is, there's an, a, a little bit of an absurdity to trying to paint one of the most famous paintings in human history in a, in a relatively abbreviated period of time. And the likelihood that this painting is going to, to look anywhere uh, near as good as the original is very, very low. <laughs> so anyone who's like, um, so I just want to temper people's expectations <laughs> going in, in here. Um, uh, well, we're going to do, a, I think, a pretty good job, but it's going to be, it's, it's, uh, this is a tall order. So we'll see how well we can do. I think I kind of <laughs> decided to do this painting maybe against my better judgment, but you know, it's also one of those things as an artist, it's a good idea to really challenge yourself frequently to um, take some risks in trying to do something outside of your comfort zone. Need to just back out here. Maybe we can do a little. Wonder if we should do any more brown or while we're at this stage. I was just like using the colors while they're on my palette, and they're fresh. And I've, especially I've got a little bit left over. I feel like it's kind of a good use of, of that paint. Oops, let's go. There we go. Somewhere around here. Um. Okay. Of course we can. We're we're going to add more details to all of this as we go. It's just kind of getting some of this in at this stage, I think, is a little bit helpful. It's a little kind of it's satisfying to kind of feel like it's coming together a little bit. Um, maybe, yeah, you know what? I'm going to add more. I'm going to paint this in down below here. This is kind of just a forgotten area of the painting, so... Um, this is like a chair that she's sitting in. I 
I'm just going to try to brush these lines kind of roughly in the shape of, let's say, this would be her lap right here. I'm not sure if she's got, we can see her legs or, or what was here, or blanket on her lap or dress. Um, anyway, just trying to... Okay. Same thing. I'm gonna... There's the arm of the chair. And let's do this area here. So this, I'm almost out of the paint that I mixed. I'm painting quite thin. Um, because, again, these are still just like primary layers underneath all of this. So. Okay. I'm not sure exactly. Well, a lot of this is going to be in shadow. It's going to get much darker as we go, so I'm not going to spend too much time in that area there. Okay. Um, let me see. I'm just going to wash these brushes quickly. So, so far, all we've been using is just acrylic paint and water. I'm going to, as we start getting into the painting, we're going to start adding more uh, research. We're going to probably use, at first, some of our slow dry medium, right? Uh, different brands call it different things. Golden calls it retarder, paint retarder. Although, as I mentioned before, that seems to be very politically incorrect these days. Uh, but it is kind of within like the paint industry, kind of a, the standard concept that retards the drying process. but. Just, uh, you're real confused by the, uh, um, daylight savings, eh? It gets the best of us, right? I, I was just changing which of the clocks in the house because I kept on wandering around thinking like, Oh, wow, I still got lots. And then, oh, no, I don't have lots of time. I gotta move quickly. Okay. So, where, what should we do next here, if we look at the painting itself? Again, you could see here, I guess I may have cut in a little bit close, and her hair goes out here, but don't worry about that, right? In fact, it might even work nicely, because if this is part of her veil, we'll have a little bit of her veil going over the background, so that's not a problem. Um, let me think. I always... I overthink a lot of these these parts of the painting um, because it is kind of important to think about what we're going to do next. Um, I think, you know what, let's do some of the background here because I think the, if we do some of the background that might build up a little bit of confidence before we start tackling some of the foreground features here. Because obviously her face is going to be the thing that most people are going to look at first, even though, as I said, I think it's not the least interesting part of the painting, but I think there's more interesting parts to this famous painting. But if we practice a little bit in the background of using some slow dry medium and maybe even a little bit of glaze, when we come back to the foreground details, we'll, be, we'll have built up a little bit of confidence. Okay, so speaking of which, how should we approach this? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting some of the darker elements first. And then I think, 
after we do that, we can go in and put a, a light glaze of yellow over top of a lot of it. So, we can kind of go back to these colors that we put down here. All right, so we basically, to do the background, right, what we used is the cool blue and white. All right, so we're going to now, still we're going to use some of this white and we're going to use some of the blue and we're going to darken it a little bit we can even use some the same sort of color we used previously with that brown so let me just uh, let's just move the painting out of the way while i mix a little bit here uh, yeah, i guess i'll use this small brush okay so let's just see i don't have a lot of this brown left so um and in fact i would like to use a cooler brown in the background so forget everything i just said about using this again i'm going to mix a different brown i'm going to mix a cool brown because we're going to be painting the background we want our cool colors to be in behind in the background so that they create more depth in the painting. We're reserving our warm colors for the foreground, cool colors for the background. And just as a reminder, when I first started painting, I assumed that cool colors meant blue colors and warm colors meant red colors and orange. Um, but there are warm blues and cool blues warm reds and cool reds right warm yellows and cool yellows so we can have warm blues we're going to put them in the foreground and we can have cool blues we'll put them in the background we can have warm reds we'll put them in the foreground and we'll put the cool reds in the background now this painting the background is pretty much blue and the foreground is pretty much um, red and yellow anyway so it's not the best example of, of this technique, but it, it, anyway, blah, 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 let's just paint. So to make a, a cooler brown, we're going to take our cool yellow and our cool red. All right, so let's mix this in together. All right, so we got a, a cool orange. It's going to look, uh, these, oranges are almost interchangeable the only difference is is it looks a little bit duller like if I mix them side by side you would see but just looking at it right now to me this looks like I added a little bit of white into the, into an into a warm orange right it just has this slightly duller quality and that's again because You know, when we mix two warm colors, they're they're side by side, so their intensity is quite bright. But if I'm mixing this cool red and the cool yellow together, they are like almost on the opposite side of the color wheel from one another. So they're they're being pulled towards this neutral core, which is sort of neutralizing the the intensity of that color. So we've got our cool yellow. Let's now take some our cool orange we've mixed and our cool blue in here now boom it just went kind of um, very green right but and actually that looks really really nice at the moment I kind of I quite like you know when I come around here the way that that actually might be what I need I was gonna say I was gonna add more red to it to make it less green but I think that actually works really well so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some slow dry medium squeeze a bit out there stir this into my brush the slow dry medium is going to slow the drying process down and also depending on how much I put in it it's going to make it more transparent so I'm going to add a little bit more, not too much more. I don't want to add a lot because then it's going to take a while for it to dry. Even if I use the hair dryer, it's going to take forever to dry. Or not forever, but, you know, like maybe five minutes with the hair dryer blowing on it. And I don't want to spend five minutes while everyone's sitting here watching me. So and I'm going to use a smaller brush for this. <coughs> Way. 
Now, as I said, I've lost some of the details here. If you wanted to redraw some of that, you could do a little bit of that at this stage. Um, you could take this and you could kind of try to go back over some of these lines and do all that. I mean, I'm not too concerned with kind of like replicating the the background, so I might just kind of riff a little bit and, you know, like a, a musician kind of improvise a bit. But uh, anyway, I'm just going to draw this in very gently. So, uh, while I've got this color, it's on my, my brush right now, I'm going to paint in some of the darker areas. And you can see when it goes on, it's kind of, a, it's a little bit transparent, which is exactly what I wanted. It kind of looks a little bit unpleasant, this color. It's not like a really... Um, bright, gorgeous color. It's just kind of um, yeah, what does it look like? It looks like I left some soy sauce on the counter and it's dried. Um, so I'm just going to kind of paint in these shapes. In fact, I'm going to take this a little bit larger brush and do oops, that's a little bit too. There we go. That's a little bit drier. Okay. There we go. As the, as the paint starts to come off the brush. Some of this, with the benefit of using slow dry medium, if I don't like what I've done, I can just brush it right away, right? Oh, there is something going on here. Oh, I forgot that part of this painting is extra, right? It's on the, it's, it's not actually technically part of the original. That's why I was getting confused. in and some of this foreground stuff I'm gonna use some warmer colors for that dilute some of this here. I'm just kind of working in this middle ground area here. Again, I'm just painting, going right up and even over top of her hair a little bit too. Bridge here. I'm just thinking in terms of time, I'm probably not going to be able to get much detail in this background at all. So I'm just going to be pretty simple with how I approach this area here. Okay, so now I'm just going to take some more slow dry medium. I'm going to put it off to the side here, and we're going to kind of glaze a little bit with it. 
All right, so I'm just going to take my brush into the side area, not into this big dark area. But now, like, look, if I paint like this, it's like almost these transparent brush strokes. So that's what I'm after. So now let's continue. Let's do... A little bit. As I said, if you look at that original one that Deborah posted, or the, the digital reconstruction, um, you could see probably a lot more detail in this area. with some warmer color. And you know what? Let's I'm gonna use this same color in this area here, even though it's because it's fairly thin. So if I was doing this with oil paint, I would be using um uh oh gosh it's uh, the uh like gamsol. Or not use a gamsol? Oh well. Um, uh, um, not gamsol. It's my. Ah, I can't remember. I use golden um, oil paints. If you're curious. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna. Now, I'm going to keep on moving here. I'm taking some more of the slow dry medium. I'm just putting even more to the side. So I'm trying to get thinner and thinner paints as I go here. this and they kind of look the same as the previous then you can just go over top of this layer with the same material you just used and it's going to make some of these ones just a little bit darker right? so just painting putting another coat of paint on your bathroom walls or something right that looks pretty good on its own in fact we, I mean depending on how much time we have later on I might be kind of happy with some of this as the background as it is right? I, I, I could be convinced to leave it like this if I had to okay so that's kind of a, a nice that, for me that feels pretty good as a playing with the um, doing a little bit of glazing in the background. It makes me feel like, oh, okay, I'm kind of, um, I can practice in some of these areas. And you can also practice in some of the darker areas too without fear of, um, and then also at the end of the day, this, every painting you make, no matter how good you are, is practice for the next painting you're going to make. Regardless, so, if this painting doesn't turn out, it doesn't mean that you're a terrible artist and a terrible human being and you've just got to change and do something else. It means you've learned some incredibly valuable lessons, maybe of what not to do. Um, 
and you're going to be able to apply those lessons to the next painting. Maybe you'll make this one again, you'll try it, and you'll get better the second time around. Or maybe you'll use it towards other things. Or you'll learn, hey, I'm never doing glazing ever again. I'm going to paint more modernist paintings that don't use that technique at all. Um, okay. <laughs> Josh says, I think there was a scene um, with Leonardo da Vinci and Mona Lisa in the movie M, Peabody and Sherman, which is a time travel by DreamWorks. Huh. Peabody and Sherman, that sounds so familiar. It reminds me. Sounds like, uh, what were the characters in Bo Winkle? I don't even remember those. Uh, was it Sher I feel like Sherman and Peabody was kind of like side characters in Bo Winkle. So I think already, I mean, uh, we've used these kind of this glazing effect because I see Deborah saying this, this beginning to look like three dimensional, right? We have these warmer colors in the foreground and cooler colors in the background. And just by using, I mean, we've got just very little paint on here. All of a sudden that is pushed far back. It's just, we see a lot of space in this painting, which just feels really nice, right? I like how already that feels free, for like, this is all pretty simple little mushy brush strokes, but it's it already is having some effect. So, um, I think what let's do some of her clothing. I think next we'll build up more and more confidence before we tackle her skin. I think would be a good idea. Um, okay. <laughs> I was right. Rocky and Bullwinkle show. Okay. So, what color should we paint these the sleeves? I think this is basically like a... It, it looks kind of... If we look at the original, it looks like kind of like a... Um, intended to be maybe a almost gold kind of color. It's like a, um, a yellow-orange. Right? So, how do we get that? Let's mix it. We'll move the palette out of the way temporarily. And we're going to use some warm yellow, warm red, and maybe a touch of warm blue to make this. So let me I'll just uh, mix it down here. So we'll just take some of my warm yellow from before. Let's take some warm red. We won't need too much of it. And you see how whenever I'm doing this, I, I'll take a little bit and I put it to the side and then I slowly draw it into my mixture. Okay. So we got this. A little bit, almost, a, it's an orange. If I put wh white into it right now, it's going to go a bit, bit peachy. Let's just take a little tiny bit. Like, you see how when I'm talking a little tiny, people are always like, yeah, a little tiny, and then <laughs> I'm, I'm talking little tiny bit of blue on here, right? So basically what I've I got here now, this color um, is kind of a bit of like a sandy yellow. It's, it's brown, it's very light brown. In fact, we're going to do something very similar to this skin tone. We're just going to add some white to it, but that works pretty well. All right, so as a reminder, these were all warm colors. My warm yellow, my warm red, my warm blue. And then I'm just going to paint this over top of these areas where her sleeves While we're right here, we can decide, do we want to use this same color elsewhere? Um, 
you know, I'm just going to use this same color right here. I'm, I'm not sure what these things are. But we'll just... Uh, there. I think I've, I have seen a version of this that was sort of like a little bit... Um, like as if the, the cameraman or woman backed out and we can see... I think there were like pillars and things around here. And I can't remember if these were like cats or little lion sculptures or something. I'm sure if somebody Googles it, they'll find it, but um, maybe I'm just going to take this same color. Again, just for the sake of time, maybe make a few little changes here. Let's even, I'll just, uh, I think this is supposed to be, I'm not sure what this, well, I'm just going to put it right up here. This almost looks like this is a green that turns into, it's got some highlights on it, so maybe we'll just kind of go with that. Because maybe we'll paint some greenish stuff and this color will shine through. Okay, that's cool. Uh, and you know what, let's take the same color and just see if, if we paint it over top of this under here and magic starts to happen. just painting over top of this darker bluish area the background that we did earlier it's warming it up and pulling it a little bit closer towards us now I think we're I think we're ready to do a little bit of the flesh tones now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mix this exact color that we just did. I'm going to do it one more time, but we're going to add a little bit of white into it, right? So we'll walk right through the whole thing. I'm going to put some paint down here. I have a feeling we're going to be using this paint many times. So I'm not going to doesn't mean I'm going to make a big batch of it. I'm just going to put my this was my warm yellow. I just squeezed it onto the tube right down here. Let's take some red. It's a little bit too much, so I'm just going to add more yellow. Okay. Now let's take, again, a little bit of blue. Put that to the side. So the blue modifies the orange and turns it into a brown, right? And all skin tones are, are versions of brown, right? If we just add white to orange, we're going to get a, a super kind of peachy color, which might be okay for like maybe rosy cheeks and stuff but not for the most of the, of the face. Okay, so we need some white. We're not gonna need much of it, but I'm putting a little bit extra here. Let's take some of this white and mix it in here. Okay, now we look at the screen it needs to go much, much more white, right? So, again, I'm going to put this off down here. I'll blend it in here. If it's if it's too greenish, that means you got too much blue. If it's too red, you've got too much red. I mean, and then you just 
add a little bit of the other colors to kind of balance it out. I'm pretty, that's pretty good. Let's add a little bit more white in here. She does have like a very, very fair complexion, so. That's pretty good. We're going to modify it over and over and over again, but um, okay. So now that I've got a color I'm pretty happy with, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to gonna mix it. Um, I'm going to put some slow dry medium off to the side. And let's just get some of that on our paintbrush. I'm going to mix it over here. Okay, and then maybe why don't we start down here on the hands. I'm just going to paint over all of the hand. So see I got lots of pencil lines showing through, which is totally fine. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with those pencil lines showing through. Don't forget the little finger hiding underneath there as well. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Again, it's not as dark as the original, but I'm, what I've mixed here is what we would call our local color. The local color is the av it's the color between the darkest and the and the lightest of uh, right. So the local color of my hand would be you know maybe in here not where the light is kind of hitting it or near my fingernails. It's kind of, you know, if you took all of the colors and you averaged them out, that would be your, your local color. So now we'll put this on her chest up here and we'll go up to her face. And it's, you know, at the moment it's, you know, I'm looking at the screen fairly, in, it's all not invisible but it's not like, you know, um, it's not a radically, alt, you know, canvas altering color here. In fact, I'm pretty happy with the way that's turning out. And you can see I painted right over some of those dark, um, uh, brush strokes we put down there first for the eyes and the lips, etc. That's great. Okay. Um, so much so that I'm kind of tempted. Let's just see if I paint in this pathway in here. Just a Curiosity. Maybe I'll put a little bit of highlights in part of these mountains with the same flesh tone we got here. <laughs> okay. Um. Now, what should we do next? We're going to let this dry for a couple minutes because it's going to be pretty tacky otherwise. Fingers are I think I'm going to I'm going to blow dry this and then I'm going to darken it. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm ready to start doing going into to the flesh and darkening and add, adding some more depth to it. So
Uh, I, Josh says that the background music is really calming, which is great, but I realize it might be a, quite high. So um, usually I, I, I turn it down when the show begins, but uh, I kind of spaced out. There's so many different things going on that it's... Uh, so if, if you're having a hard time hearing or anything, please let me know in the comments because sometimes I got, I'm got i just a one-man band here. I'm like playing drums and guitar and got my harmonica and doing all everything all at once. So it's, uh, sometimes I, all this stuff escapes me. Okay, so let's... Um, we, this, what I, I'm just going to use on my palette here... I've got slow, dry, medium, and this flesh tone that I mixed up here, Caucasian flesh tone. Um, so you can use, at this point, if you want, you could be using your glazing medium to do some of this. Since I've already got this mixed up, I'm just going to continue using it. But if you wanted to, um, you could switch to, let's say, your glazing fluid instead which I think I will do as we go get a little bit further, but uh, these are fairly interchangeable. So if we want to, we're going to modify this, and let's say we want it to get a little bit darker. We do have this darker, cool brown that we mixed before, but again, I want it to be a... Um, w these colors are in the foreground, so we want to have a, uh, a warm brown a, a brown that's warm all right so let's if we can modify this by putting let's say a little bit of blue a little bit of red let's mix a bit of a purple here all right we're not going to need a lot of this so you can see i'm not i'm not even going to bother making it really much more than that Already, like this is going to be some of the darkest colors in the face and hands. All right, so you can see I'm taking it. I'm going to um, rub some off here. And then I'm going to come back to this paint. Okay. So you might look at that and say, well, that's not much of a change. But just wait until we start painting with it, and you'll be like, whoa. That might, that's too dark. And if I was Leonardo, I would I would be doing this and in such a way that this is almost invisible. All right, so in fact, I'm going to go to a smaller brush because I'm going to start with these fingers again. And we're just going to work with... Um, so I'm going to take this slightly darker color. And I'm just going to start painting into these kind of like adding little shadows on here so you're thinking the light is kind of hitting her from above and so we have you know the tops of her hands have highlights and then under on the s and on the side they're getting darker and darker if you're really strapped for time you can just jump to a much darker color We can paint that in, and if you have a, a, a mop brush or a blending brush, all right, you can take that, and then you can just kind of go over some of these edges and just kind of soften them up, if you like. So I'm I'm skipping like this is like leaping forward one year in Leonardo's process here. Just going much, much darker, much faster. So we're not gonna have as beautiful, subtle of transitions between light and dark as he's famous for. But I think we'll do oops, that's no, and if you've done something like that and you've gone a little bit too dark too quickly, good thing with slow dry medium is I can get a little bit of, I just took my rag with a little bit of water and I can just go in here and boom, problem gone. 
Now, it's still going to be a little bit wet there, so I'm not going to start um, doing anything on it just yet. I'll let it dry, and then I'll come back to it. So let's kind of now go up into the face here. How about let's start... We'll start a little slow, and we'll do around her neck here. Neck, and then forehead. Don't worry about going over the brown of her hair and all that kind of stuff, because we will... We'll, um, we'll go over some of that later on. So I'm just kind of going around in her hairline and darkening this. Okay, and then in her eye cavity here, darkening this. Just softening it up as I go. I'm trying to avoid like really, really dark, um, solid areas of color, right? In fact, this line where I did the nose originally on my sketch, that might be, have been a little bit too heavy handed. I can get rid of it as I go, but. We've got a highlight kind of on her chin there, so we'll try to keep that area free of paint. And if you want to make this darker, you just go over top of those same areas again. But you want to kind of let it dry a little bit, otherwise you're going to be kind of scraping some of the paint away. Back down under her chin here to darken this area. And so the secret to this is patience and slow buildup of paint. The more patient you are, the better results you're going to get. Keep on darkening these areas as we go. So that's pretty good right there. We are going to put some highlights on there too. So don't worry about that. We're going to, it's going to get brighter in a few select places. Okay. By now, the hands are starting to get a little bit uh, dry, which is perfect. So I'm going to actually use the blow dryer here in a second. I'm just going to, she's got a little bit of cleavage here. So we'll just, and maybe around the side here. So let's blow dry this, and then we'll we'll get a, we'll do a few more layers of this, get darker and darker, and then we'll brighten up.
Okay, ideally you would wait for when you use the blow dryer and you're, if you're painting in acrylic, right? You'd want to blow dry and then really wait for this to get, for it no longer to be tacky. Um, but I'm just going to keep on going just because of time. So let's just now, I'm going to darken this again. I'm just going to use the same color. Now, I, again, I just want to remind you, if you've got the time, then by all means, take your time and go slow. I'm going to add a little bit of red here just to warm it up just a little bit. Because right now, this is going to be a, a quite a leap forward here. In fact, I'm going to put a bit more slow dry medium in there. It's going to be much darker, but if I was Leonardo, I would, you know, spend quite a while doing really subtle glazing here. You know, I may not even have a chance to do much more to these hands than I'm, than I'm doing right now, so... Uh, you know, I think you you can see the effect, right? It's uh, I'm, I'm, what I'm, I might do a little bit of a little bit of outlining because I'm gonna have to darken a few places in here. So, but we'll we'll get there eventually. That looks pretty good, right? You know, it's um, pretty happy with that so far. Let's go up again into her hairline. And so I'm, I'm just, I'm sort of doing the, the as, when I'm using these darker colors, I'm going into kind of the darker areas of the shadow. I'm not going over top of everything I just did, just the areas that need to go get darker and darker. Always take your brush and just soften things out, scrub it away if you're not happy with it. You don't have to paint as fast as I'm painting, although I'm not really painting that fast, but you know, considering some of the other classes that we've done, you know, I, you take your time and, and there's no hurry. If this painting takes you years, then you're in good company. Not everybody's got years to work on a painting. up I think I might do one more how many of these can I just in terms of time I might be able to do maybe I'll do two more on the face because I also obviously there's other parts of this painting I want to get done as well um
Okay. Um, I'm going to push this a little bit further as we go here. Um, let's, I'm going to take more of this purple. I'm going to mix a little bit more of it. Okay. We'll put this right into here. So this is, this is, again, we're jumping an extra year forward. This, we're now in like 1505 while we're painting this. We've, we've condensed three years of painting into what we've got here. And obviously we are lacking years worth of subtlety. You know, probably three or 400 layers of, of paint that Leonardo had, excuse me, in his, so. Um, I just want to get some of this shading here on the hands. You know what? I should. I'm going to put a little more slow dry medium on there. This is getting. This is a little bit too dark, and I want to be able to blend it. And I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do too much. So this is kind of almost approximates the darkness of my pencils, or the pencil marks, I guess. So I'm almost kind of using the pencil marks as a bit of an outline. If I feel like I've gone a little bit too heavy, I'm just going to brush it right into the clothes that are there. Okay. saw in the comments um, Josh says I'm not proud of the way Mona Lisa's hands look in my painting uh, Leonardo was probably one of the, the greatest drawers of hands who ever lived <laughs> there there's a, I remember I used to have a book just on I think it was called like Leonardo's hands or something like that so, if, if you're struggling painting hands as well as Leonardo does, then, again, you're in great company. It's, it's been written about extensively. As I said, one of my favorite parts of this painting is the hands and how kind of delicate they are. And, uh, there's just only so much that we can do in one small painting, right? So don't be too hard on yourself. Know, worse comes to worse as you're working on this painting you can you know just darken this area quite significantly and kind of hide any of that kind of stuff okay, there's yeah, some subtleties obviously tons of subtleties that I'm not getting in there but uh, just we're gonna have to keep going So now we're really starting to kind of darken some of the darkest facial features. Right 
these this pretty strong um, eyebrow ridge. We're gonna go over some of this with some dark. We're gonna outline a few things. trying to focus on some of the darkest parts here all right so i paint in some of those darker parts and then kind of blend them in i'm gonna probably do like just blow dry this and then just do a second coat on top you can see when i'm doing this i'm just let's get another view Like I just kind of paint into an area and then I'm just sort of using this brush, barely holding it in my hand, just rubbing, kind of scrubbing it a bit out. It's all just about like being kind of delicate with that. If you see like little specks inside here, probably best just to leave them and then come back and, and touch it up later on. There is going to be hair kind of coming over top onto her chest here, but there's also, if there's hair there, it's going to be casting a bit of a shadow. So I want it to be a little bit darker over there. Okay. I'm just going to darken this side of her face a bit more. Okay, I'm going to blow dry that and then I'm going to come back and um, do exactly what I did with that same color. I'm just going to darken one more time. I see Deborah's promoting my drawing class there. I appreciate that, Deborah. I should uh, give you a cut of the. Well, there's no real proceeds, but <laughs> you're you're my good hype man there. That's I appreciate that. Yeah, I did do beyond this a uh, painting class. I did um, 
last summer I did a whole drawing class. Did we do 40 episodes of that? And we did a whole episode just on drawing hands. We did one on drawing feet and ears and noses and... <clears throat> okay. Um, uh, let's go back to here. So I'm just going to go back over in some of these darker areas. And I, I, I know I'm, I sound like a broken record, but it really is the subtlety and the slow buildup of paint that makes this painting, that this entire painting is all about. I'm rushing to try to get as much done as humanly possible so that I can live with it. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it's just a matter of taking your time and... And I think you can see, like, you know, I'm going kind of fast, but I'm not going too fast. And you can kind of see how, as I do this, it starts to kind of, her face starts to have volume and look more so-called realistic, right? Now, there's parts of this that I'm not so happy with just because of the speed that I'm painting at. But, you know, it's, it's not unexpected that that kind of thing happens. Now... I'm also going, I've painted this darker color just over her chin, which is a highlight, but it's also because it's it's a highlight, but it's not as bright as, let's say, maybe her the tip of her nose, maybe. So I'm just darkening that as well. Okay. So, I mean, obviously, it drives me crazy kind of seeing areas here where I'm like, ah, I really would like to, to spend two or three hours kind of really refining this, but again, we can see I'm painting in this area on her cheek and chin a bit. Uh, anything darkening down here that I need to do? Okay, I think I'm going to take a break from the face and the body here in a second and move on to other parts of the painting. do that because um, I can always mix any of these colors and continue I mean I, I will darken out all these things and I think that's gonna make a big difference because if you're looking at this right now and you're feeling like I look at them side by side where we? and it's not quite as dark when we put a dark color back in these pupils even just that maybe a little one for the nostril and those lips boom it's gonna change quite radically Actually, you know what? While we're right here, I think I am going to put a little bit of color on her lips. I'm going to take a bit of this warm red. I mean, again, like when I say a little bit, you know, I'm talking a little bit. All right, let's mix this. I'm just going to mix this into the col darker color I have here. Let's just give a little bit of life to the lips. Oops. Not this view. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Super subtle effect. Just a little bit. Maybe I'll let that dry and I'll probably do that one more time again as well. Okay. Uh, 
So what should we do next? Let's do her clothing. We'll do her hair. We'll come back, finish her face. And just in terms of time, I don't think I'll be able to get too much more done in the backgrounds, but we'll see. I might do a quick glaze of like a very, very subtle, cool yellow in the, in the background. Um, all that's dry. Yeah, okay. So these, this looks basically just like a, a blue, like a really dark blue brown. So let's mix that color. We basically used it already. Um, although you know what, we want a, a warmer blue. So we're gonna mix it again. We're gonna do, um, we're gonna do a warm blue brown. Oops, this paintbrush is sitting here drying away. Should be in the water. So I'm just gonna paint right over this area. I wanna, you, depending on the kind of palette you have, you can, it can be a little bit dicey to paint on dried paint because it can kind of, you might find little pieces peel up and get into your color, just as a word of caution. And this brush. <laughs> okay, that brush. Uh, mm -hmm. Just broke. Okay, that one goes in the garbage. <laughs> a little too forceful for that one. It's kind of lucky that I didn't have a disaster on the canvas, but okay. So let's try this again. We got, oops, and I put cool blue in there. And this brush is falling apart, okay. I did buy new brushes more new cheap brushes, but I have yet to open them. I'll just show you these things here. While I'm, I think, where did I get these? I think I got these at Michael's. And I think I paid, yeah, these are Artist Loft. I think you can order these on Amazon as well. Um, but uh, if you want, you can kind of pause the screen you can order something basically i what i like my favorite types of brushes are these flat brushes i love painting with those and the nice small ones okay um so i need to i'm going to mix this paint again because i don't want the cool blue although it's not so bad but since we're painting foreground stuff i'm going to paint is there white in there I'm running out of space on this palette. I'm like, where am I going to do this? Let's do this right in here. Okay. So warm blue, warm red. Right now i got a pretty dark color. Let's put some, um, this is warm yellow too that I was using before. So now we've got a, 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 a warm brown. Basically the same thing that we did here, just a lot darker, right? This was primarily warm yellow with just a little bit of warm blue and warm red. This one is now mostly warm blue and warm red with just a little bit of yellow. So we've got a really dark brown now. I'm gonna add more blue to it and we're gonna turn it into a much darker blue. See that? See this color here, really dark blue. That's beautiful. That's what I want. Perfection. I love that, right? What color would I say that is? It's almost like um, a midnight blue, a kind of like a really, really dark military blue, super dark navy blue, I would say, that, that I've got right now. I know it probably doesn't come across very well on the screen, but that's the color I like. For, for, for a lot of this areas of the painting. I'm gonna use my slow dry medium in here. Uh, and for the sake of time, I'm just gonna, I'm probably gonna put this, this color into a lot of places. Just, uh, okay. Let's start down here. You know, I, 
and I, as I said, I know that this is not exactly the color. I'm making some ch just uh, changes out of convenience in this area here. Like, I think sort of where we're at right now, as depressing as it might sound, is kind of like where you'd want to be. Um, this would be like a very good underpainting. Right, this is the kind of where you'd, if you were, if you really, really wanted to replicate this painting faithfully, this would be at this stage where I am right now would be you know the uh, a, a really good first day's work of painting or first year of painting if you're Leonardo you kind of want to build up to this place and then you'd you'd start really starting to refine things Obviously, we're short on time, so we're going to just kind of complete it from here. But so let's say even let's start adding some. I don't know what this sh thing is right here. I'm just going to take it and. Yeah, I'm going to put some super dark shadows in it. Why, why not? Um. I don't know what this thing is. It feels to me like a big blobs of something, so I'm going to treat it like a blob. Kind of looks like a big uh, poo emoji, <laughs> if I may say. Okay. Um, let's also... I'm going to take the same color... And I'm just going to go right over top of this brown with this dark blue. So now we've, we're kind of modifying this color with this darker color over top of it. And you can see it just goes much, much darker. I probably should have painted this brown earlier, but we're gonna, we'll, um, so why not? Let's kind of do the opposite. Let's paint this dark blue in this area, and we can paint brown over top of it. Okay. 
Um, let me do the same thing here. Now, part of this is her hair, so I'm going to go totally all the way up into her hair. See you guys talking in the chat there about this being very relaxing. I, you know, I, I think painting has got to be one of the most relaxing things you can do. Now, it's, it, I, I totally get that for some people it can be very stressful, especially when you're kind of starting out because there's so many things to kind of think about and keep track of. And but if you've been painting for a while, if you've been painting with me for a while. Um, and you start to kind of know a little bit more it it does get more relaxing because your your instincts kind of start taking over and you're not thinking so much about is it warm or cool colors right now or you just sort of do it and that's it takes a while to get to that place but boy when you do it gets really exciting right okay um, to do this, I'm just going to lighten it up a little bit. So I've got this real dark color. So how can I lighten that up? Why don't we take a little bit of uh, the yellow, the warm yellow. And it's very green right now, but that's okay. Let's take some slow dry medium on there. Oh, that's really opaque too, so. I'm just going to take this same kind of a little bit greenish color and go over top of some of these folds here and darken that. And I can even take this and maybe go into some of these colors over here into this uh, bit of a gold. Kind of glazing a little bit here. I'm impressed there's so many of you guys following along here painting with me. <laughs> this is not an easy painting to do, and the fact that uh, you guys are trying to do it makes me really, really excited. Okay, so there's all sorts of stuff going on in these in these darker areas. I'm not going to spend too long in here. Just in fact, I'm probably just I'm going to pretty much darken a lot. I mean, the origin. I mean. The original, again, we could, we could look at the one that Deborah posted, the digital recreation, and we've got a lot more subtlety in here. But really, ultimately, the focus of this painting is the face and the hands. So if these areas we get pretty dark, I wouldn't be disappointed with myself if that was to happen. Just 
just I've just been taking this kind of very this kind of warm green and uh, giving me kind of some a little bit of shadow in some of these areas here. Cherry Pies says, Oh my god, I didn't know this was actually live. I thought it was one of those pre-recorded streams. We are live. We are live. You can paint along with me every Tuesday and Thursday. Same place, same time. So in these darker areas, I wouldn't worry about adding, you know, like... I'm looking at my drawing here and there's all these kind of I wouldn't worry about getting all of that in there except just trying to think about going in the direction of the fabric so when I'm painting this I don't want to be painting straight lines across I want to try to think about how they go around the form here right so just thinking and that's enough in in this particular area to to kind of make it convincing And just like we were doing in the face, it's just this kind of, you can spend a lot of time slowly building things up, but. I don't think too many people are gonna be looking, if you're, about, you, about these parts, of your painting and how you pulled them, them off there, I think. As much as I, I don't want to admit it, I think for a lot of people, when they look at it, it's a bit of an afterthought. So I do think as an artist, you want to, you want to pay attention to these areas, but I wouldn't let them um, dominate your attention. That doesn't, I don't think that green works too well down here. I'll turn that into a brown later on. Okay, I think it might be time for me to tackle some of this. And this, I don't know, uh, but I'm going to kind of make it into a bit of a gray, I think, is what I'm gonna, how I'm going to approach this. So how do we make a gray if we don't have black? I mean, we could use black, but I'm going to try to make a gray without the black, right? So it's basically just taking our, you know, one of our darker colors and adding white to it. All right, look at that. I got gray. I haven't touched the black. Right, so now it's kind of a, a bit of maybe a little bit too much for demonstration purposes, but it's it's now quite dark, so uh, or quite light. So I want it to be a bit darker, so I'm gonna put some blue in here. I'm gonna put some red in this warm red, warm blue. Let's steal a little bit of the warm yellow. Now it's kind of gone kind of red, which means I need some more blue. And if 
it's a little too purple, we'll just add a little bit of yellow into it, and yellow is going to make it go brown again. Okay, it's a bit purple at the moment, but I'm not too concerned. That's kind of nice. And again, that kind of helps show that that neutral core really is, you know, where all those colors are overlapping is is a gray brown muddy center I put a little too much white in here but I can always darken things I'm never great thing with painting even oil painting oil painting is actually even easier because you just scrape it right off you don't have to even paint over it you just scrape it off Now I could also, right now, I'm not the biggest fan of this color just all by itself. But if I glaze or put something over top of it, I think it will improve radically. So I, I, the tops of these are getting light. I think what I'm going to do, I'll leave the top of this kind of balcony for, for a little bit. I'll let this dry and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to paint, I'll put a... Um, like a, a kind of a reddish brown glaze over this and I think that will work really well. Um, okay, let's clean some brushes for a minute here. Oh, I didn't even see your comment earlier there. Uh, oh, look at all these comments. I'm kind of Uh, Debris, <laughs> Josh says, uh, my Mona Lisa, or mine, Markowski's Mona Lisa is winking. <laughs> it does kind of a little bit look like that, doesn't she? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Um, uh, Sue says, I had to white out her face and start over. She looked a lot like a Chucky doll or Chuck doll. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that can happen for sure. Sometimes, uh... If we're if we go a little bit heavy-handed and you know we can if we make a mistake you can always you know add more and more white and just start it over and don't be too hard on yourself um, you know we, we've been painting for for less than two and a half hours and this is what we have so we've been alive for two and a half hours and it took us about half an hour just to get the drawing on here and those and that so really two hours we've been or less is what is taking us to get to this point which makes me feel pretty good i mean i'm gonna paint for probably another hour and um and then i've got to go but i think within the next hour i'm going to be able to to do a reasonable good job of finishing this painting The things that I'm going to do over the next hour, if I just sort of make a little mental list for myself, I'm going to touch up the hands, just add a little bit more, some quite dark lines in here, because this is kind of needs a little bit of love. I'm going to do, a, I'm probably just going to make a, a pretty dark blue, and I'll touch up and add some kind of little bit darker areas into these folds. And depending on, on that blue, I can also use it for some darkening these folds in the fabric and maybe even a little bit in the, in the fingers and up and around here. Um, let me see with the... I'm going to also make a, a dark brown, dark reddish brown, and we'll do her hair. We'll also finish up her lips. We'll do a glaze of yellow over the background. And uh, 
Uh, I might, I'll, I'm going to add maybe some red glaze in here. Or maybe that might be... Yeah, we'll do a little bit of red and orange and yellow in here. So we'll have cool yellow and warm yellow. So sort of gives you a bit of an idea of what needs to be done at this point. But, you know, I'm looking at them side by side on the monitor, and I'm feeling pretty happy with where we've gotten in this short period of time. <laughs> Relative short period of time. You know, I'm, you've, I'm, I know I'm a tired old record, but one of the things, you know, if I'm painting, going over the painting over and over, every time, like, I can, like, I could walk away right now. I'm, I'm, there's obviously lots of, it would drive me crazy because there's a few things I would want to do more to it, but, I mean, if I'm painting over and over everything constantly, then it's always kind of done right I can always walk away because I always think you can just paint endlessly on a painting right painters talk all the time when is it done and it's sort of like I don't know when I'm out of time that's when I'm kind of done right when I'm when I'm just when I'm, I can feel I can walk away and I'm and and not have to paint on it again tomorrow um, that you know I don't feel too bad about putting my name to it that's when it's done because otherwise I could just paint on endlessly, which, you know, when we talked about like Leonardo spending three years, potentially 15 years on it, it wouldn't surprise me if the, if it's not an either or three years or 15 years that it, he probably painted it over a course of a couple of years. And because he's painting an oil paint, so these layers, I'm talking, he's putting like hundreds of layers. Each layer could take weeks to dry. So it's not like he's painting on it nine to five every day for three years. He's painting a little bit. He's, he sets it aside, lets it dry for a few weeks, paints a little bit, lets it, and meanwhile, he's working on all sorts of other things. And then he probably got it to a point where he was pretty happy with it. And then it might have been just sitting in his studio um, or was sold. And then he probably took it back or worked on it some more years later, which is not uncommon. There's, there are um, stories of artists painting on the same painting over decades of time. But again, not every day over decades of time. Just, you know, it's, you know I've, I've got paintings that I've worked on over and over and over. Okay, anyway. Blah, 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 blah. Let's, um, what was I going to do next? Um, maybe it might be time to do this glaze over the background. I think that would be a probably good, a good use of our time at this point. Okay, so if I want to do a cool yellow glaze... I need to find a part of my palette, and I'm starting to, I might need to use a different palette. Uh, do I have one within arm's reach? No, I don't think I do. So I think I'm gonna mix my, where do I, what can I use? You know what, I'm just gonna do, let's just clean up here. I'm gonna wipe this 
some paint. This is my warm yellow. Wipe this up pretty good. Good, okay. I'm gonna paint my cool yellow in this area here, and I'm gonna use mostly, I'm gonna continue using slow dry medium. I've been, I was like, oh, let's use glazing fluid, but you know, I think the slow dry medium will be just fine. Okay. So I want, oh, some of these brushes. I must be getting lazy when I'm after the show, just letting them dry a bit. So I'm gonna have to give these brushes a little bit of extra attention when they are. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna take my cool yellow. I'm gonna put it to the side here. I'm using my slow dry medium. I've just got a bit on my brush here. And I'm gonna go into this glazing fluid and get a bunch on my brush here. Even that might be a little bright. So I'm gonna put a bunch more on here. The the whole idea of glazing, especially the way Leonardo did, is your these glazes would should be almost totally tra like transparent. That you might be the only person who can actually tell that there's that you're doing anything, or um, and that's when it has I think the best effect possible. So I'm gonna take this and let's see how far down we want to go. So I'm going to go right over. Now, again, I'm looking at the screen, computer or the television screen, and the effect that this is having from what you probably see at home is virtually minimal. I don't even think you can tell a difference, can you? On the other hand, I can see a difference. I can see that this has a bit of a yellowish cast to it. And I'm just gonna go over all of this. Now, part of this yellow cast is the uh, varnish that was applied. Years of like of other people touching up this painting over, you know, 500 years of. And so some of this is not. I don't suspect he had a slightly green sky I think that that's the varnish and and the varnish tends to yellow over time especially organic older varnishes from from the past so so I think for when you're looking at this at home you probably don't see much of a difference for me what I've just done it's taken some of the intensity of that blue that was previously there away. So now the background is a little bit more muted. And um, again, it, it pushes it a little bit further back. Now, I'm not going to go quite as radical as the actual so-called original. Um, I feel like if I put that amount of yellow into the background, it's going to look a little bit funny. Because you want to remember... Oops. That... Ah, see, let me just leave things be. Because um, once I start, you start touching all this up, it starts to... I'm just let that okay um what was i about to say i have to remember that this painting is going to sit on its own and people have an idea of what the mona lisa looks like that is might be very different than what it actually does look like so if you were to actually try to paint, you know reproduce the original as faithfully as possible with the way that it's been restored, people are like, wow, why did you paint the background so green and yellowy? You're like, oh, well, we're going to get your phone out and, and you show people and they're like, oh, yeah, I guess it does look like that. Huh. But <laughs> then you're, and you look at it on your wall and say, well, it's, a, it's exactly like the original. People are like, yeah, I don't know, that sky just looks really muddy. And, but, so I always think about these things when I'm making my paintings is, Sometimes, you know, I have 
this image up on the screen side by side all the time and it's when it's like this it's very easy to compare them back and forth but when we're paint when it's eventually exists on its own um, it has to exist on its own and you have to be happy with with this not with how much it looks like the original well there's so many comments in here um, where did I, uh, Deborah says, I had to also, um, uh, wipe it away and start over, uh, what Rick said was to do the base coat and a bit more with Michael, then stop, watch him and do it tomorrow while we're watching. <laughs> um, so you can just see if I made any mistakes and how I fixed it. Um, what else did I see? Deborah says, Michael, yours is becoming more and more like the digital copy. It looks amazing. Uh, whoa, look at all these. Um, Deborah says, oh, yeah, that's a good tip, Deborah. I start off well, but my eyes get tired, and along with the rest of me after a full days of work. Yeah. <laughs> if you're working all day long and you're going home and trying to paint the Mona Lisa afterwards, I get, that is, you know, quite an achievement. <laughs> this, is, this is a hard thing to come back home to and to work on. Um, Cherry Pie says, this is so relaxing. I got my heart broken today, so this is making me feel a bit better. Oh, I'm sorry, Cherry. Cherry Pies. Um, uh, yeah, one of the great things you can do is dive into making some art. You know, there's a whole field of art therapy. People who use art to help get them over tragedies and PTSD. You know, there's... The, the U.S. Army has an art therapy program. They have meditation programs now to help um, people who've suffered all sorts of kind of trauma overcome some of that. Uh, so yeah, break up the paint, start making a painting. That would be a great way of uh, overcoming that breakup. Um, oh, look at all these. Every time I scroll, it jumps up. Um, yeah, some great encouragement, people, um, helping you get over your breakup. Oh, good, thank you. I love all this community here. Um, <laughs> Deborah says, well, folks, I'm going to have to call it a day. So nice that you have joined us, Cherry. Please consider joining our group. Look forward to finishing this painting. Hugs. Uh, Josh says, I have a question. Sue says, oh, uh, me too. Oh, you forgot your question. Wait, I remember when I get accepted into the Facebook group, I just sent an application. Yes. So we'll, after um, after I'm done here, I'll approve your, your membership to the group here. Um, okay. So I'm letting... I'm, I'm, I'm uh, doing this purposefully, letting this background dry a little bit. The main difference between... There's there's multiple differences, but for our sake, the the difference between using slow dry medium for glazing as opposed to actual glazing fluid for glazing is the glazing fluid is going to dry much faster, right? Um, the other thing is the the slow dry medium. I don't know if this is. I don't know if it comes in glossy or matte at all. I do find it is a little bit glossy. And it's especially glossy when it's drying. I think you'll find after it dries, it gets a little bit more matte. But um, so, you know, the benefit of using the glazing fluid is we can glaze on that background. It dries within a few minutes and then you could paint over it. Using the slow dry medium does this very similar effect for glazing. But, you know, there's quite a lot of, of slow dry medium in that background. So, gosh, that's going to take a little while for that to dry. I'm not so concerned with that because I'm not really going to do much more in the background, except maybe work down here. But I also didn't put any slow dry medium there either. So, um, now, you know, let's go back to the face. We've we we it's been. In, a little while since we've done, worked on that face so I think let's uh, we'll go there I'm probably at this point really just going to maybe add the do a little bit outlining here and not much really 
actual painting of the the rendering of the face. So I kind of did that, not as much as I would like to have done, but at some point you just gotta kind of call it a day, right? So um, let's mix. A color for these details so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna mix a, uh, a warm a dark warm color to do that I'm gonna take I always do that. <laughs> I always take the cool blue I don't want the cool blue I want my warm blue where is it I think it's because I rotate this and I anyway so I'm going to take my warm blue. I, I basically did this earlier, but so we'll just do this. We've got warm blue, warm red. Mix it together. It's like a, a dark, dark um, uh, brown. We'll add a little bit of yellow in it. That's, it. It's going to actually help make it go darker because now we're, we've got all three points of the color wheel covered, so it's going to get darker. And I guess, you know, we will use a little bit of cool blue. I could have maybe used that anyway. So now we got a pretty dark color on our palette. Pretty happy with that. I'm going to put it just a little dab of slow dry medium in here. Just going to help the brushing, the brushability of the color when I'm doing these fine details with that small, tiny brush. Anything that helps is appreciated. Notice I'm not using water to do this. I'm using the slow dry medium to do this. Just testing to make sure all these areas are dry before I put my hand right on top of it. Let's go in here. Maybe it's worth zooming back in. Okay, uh, just another quick little thing. When I'm using, trying to get these small details, I get the paint on my brush, and then you see how I take my brush and I kind of spin it and pull it away. That helps me get a nice sharp point on my paintbrush. So, I'm gonna do her top eyelid. I know I'm a broken record, but I haven't used any black in here. And I would say putting black to do some of these outlines is going to be too bold. It's going to be a little bit distracting. So I'm not going to use any black. It's just too dark. Okay. 
So now I've got a few little details in here. Now before I do anything else, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of slow dry medium to the side. Now you see here, I'm gonna take this color and I'm just gonna get it on my brush but I want mostly slow dry medium on here or glazing fluid. One or the other doesn't matter. So I want to use this really dark color, but I don't want to have it as saturated. You know what? In fact, I'm going to blow dry that right now because I want to use my blending brush. So I just need to. I'm a little nervous that this, some of this is still a little wet, so I think I'm going to instead, let's go down to the hands and let's just do a little bit of work down here. All right, so this is super, super subtle little bit of dark to outline things kind of like going over my pencil lines I did dip into some of my darker colors or, or that darker paint just to kind of speed this process up use it for shading so you see how I'm kind of going over this whole dark this whole area and so it darkens the darks and darkens the lights but I can still see what I did before there, right? So even though I'm going over that area, that other little finger in there I'm just gonna get rid of it there's only so much that I can hope to do in such a short period of time so
Okay, let's do the same thing in some of these folds here. at the original at this point. I'm, I've got it up on the screen for anybody at home. I'm just, you know, I kind of use my my understanding of just light and shadow and just think, okay, well, let's just, this should be darker down here. So let's just make this much darker. And I look up, oh yeah, okay, good, good. We're kind of in the zone, that's enough. Great thing with using like glazing as um, as a process is I can just sort of mix a dark color and put it over top of most other colors, not everyone, because ideally you want to kind of use something in the range of what you're using. I can paint over different colors and it's all going to go dark, right? It's all being modified. I don't have to worry about trying to mix the exact color over and over again. And I like that a lot. That certainly saves some time in this process. Um, Okay. Um, we're just thinking about time, and I would like to get close to wrapping up a bit. So, let me just add just some quick little areas of, of kind of these little folds in the fabric here. I can't even re remember what I've done, so just sort of use my, this little sheet is kind of like my cheat sheet. I'll just dip into
larger brush. Let's just take, oops, this was, hmm. like just sort of disappearing into the dark cloth. motoring along here trying to get um, some of these darker areas. I'm still just using that dark color that I mixed previously. The warm blue, warm red, a little bit of warm yellow, and a little bit of cool blue gets this really really dark dark color. But again it's not just it's not black. We've got it's like a very colorful shadow. I just mixed a little bit more of it to the side. Some warm blue, some warm red, a little bit of warm yellow. I took a bit of cool blue just to help darken it even more. And I've got this very, very dark area here. And I mixed that all up. I did put some slow dry medium in it inside, but I also just put in a little bit extra to the side here that I can dip into if I want a little bit more of a more transparent um, color there. All right, so all this here is kind of bathed in shadow. Um, we don't have to worry about too much detail in here. So let's just kind of continue into the fabric up here. There's a big shadow. All of this is quite dark. And I'm just gonna kind of, it's like as if they're kind of like wrinkles in the fabric, some lines that go. want this to be pretty subtle. I'm not going to again work too much into this. It's a little bit sloppy right now. If you want, you can just darken it and it all goes away. So I'll show you. I'm going to take the same color, but I'm going to paint in here. All right, and we get a slightly different effect, right? Let's do the same thing right here.
Okay, I know this is like not the. I'm not. I would need more time to clean all this up and make it look pretty pretty, but we are just gonna keep on plowing ahead here. Pretty pretty. Okay, there's all these, again, little details in this outfit that I just, I can not get done, but, uh... Just gonna darken down here. Cool. Okay. So I think, um, what should I do now? Let's do th th tackle this area right here on the sides. Let's bring this back out. <laughs> getting there, getting there very slowly, but getting there, right? because since this is all wet, so what did I say I want to do? Um, I see a few people are calling it a day. <laughs> nice to see you, Josh. Thanks for joining us today. I look forward to seeing you in our next class. That's, it's been great having you here painting along with me. I know it's a little bit later on. Um, you must be in the, uh, where would 9 p.m. would be somewhere maybe, uh, what's two hours ahead? Is it the central, right? That'd be Saskatchewan or... Um, Manitoba, maybe, or North Dakota, Denver, not, not Denver, that's still mountain time, so Chicago, I think, all those places. I can use that same color that I've just that dark color for some of the hair. We'll get there in a second. I want to glaze a little bit down here. I think I'm going to put a warmer uh, glaze down here, kind of a warmer brown. So uh, let me just clean up. Ooh. It's always near the end of the painting where something goofy happens, so I'm always mindful of that. Okay. Um, I've got a clean brush. So let's take some warm yellow. I got a bit of blue in there already. Cool. Warm red. It's going to turn into a bit of a brown. Take a little bit of blue. Go. 
still kind of a uh, bit more on the red side of a brown. You can see like how transparent that is. That is, I mean, not a lot of paint that I put on my brush. I like that. I should do a little bit more slow dry medium on here. Just makes it just a little bit more transparent. Okay. Um, I was going to put this down here. I feel I guess it it looks all right on camera it looks a little bit too bright or peachy so I th uh, you know I have to let it dry before I start fiddling with it um, I do think I might be able to get away with if I add a little more red to it I'm gonna take this same thing slow dry medium to the side and mix it here you can see it's now getting much more transparent and I'm going to take this let's see if I paint some of this I'm going to try to avoid some of the yellow some of the blue here. Not bad. It's a little bit too, I need probably a little bit of yellow here. Let's just wipe off this blue. The yellow would probably be a bit nicer there. And let's see if I can scrape off. I'll come back to that. I kind of like that little bit of pops of yellow in there. Okay, so I think the final thing I'm going to do, obviously I said I could spend a long time. I'm going to blow dry this, and then I'm going to finish her hair, 
and maybe a little bit around her eyes, and then we'll be done. Okay. Okay, so I'm I am um, I'm gonna spend let's say 15 minutes more and then I've gotta go. So uh, let's do the hair. We're gonna we want a, a darker brown. So I'm gonna take this color we just mixed, which was warm red, warm yellow, and warm blue. Let's add some more blue to it. This is the warm blue. I think we need a bit more. I'm just going to scrape the rest of it out. Okay. It's quite blue, so let's put a little more red in there. And some yellow. Let's put a little more yellow in here. That's pretty good. Okay, slow dry medium. Or glazing fluid, whichever you like. Stirring it up. Ace says they're going to stay here all the way to the end. Or Paula, sorry. Thank you, Paula. It's nice to have someone. Oh, and Heidi there is, is watching. Nice to see you, Heidi. Okay. So, ideally, everything would be nice and dry before I start putting my hand over the painting near the very end here. Let's, um... This is, this is very similar to the color we use for the eyes. In fact, I'll probably make those a little bit darker as we go here. But um, let's see with her hair. All right, so it blends in pretty closely to what we've already got here. So I'm just going to darken this underneath her chin and stuff. We'll probably darken this again. I 
you could see how like as I darken things around here now some of the stuff in the face feels like it could go darker as well right and that's just like a part of the painting process that you paint something and it feels really you're really happy with it and then later on it's like almost as if it changed you're like did somebody do something to when i walked away and got lunch or something why is why is it lighter all of a sudden and it's just because you've made other things around it also darker and so now it makes you need to, to kind of make some adjustments to a part of the painting you thought was totally finished and you're ready to move on So I'm just going to brush out into here. Obviously, there's details in the hair. I'm just not going to be able to do any of that today. And then there's also her veil. It's just not don't f oh yeah 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 all right i love the slow dry medium make, make a mistake like that and you just wipe it away oh yeah we had a bit of hair coming down here Big head in the way, my apologies. Just trying to add a little bit of wave to the hair so it doesn't look super straight. Just all these little beautiful curls in the hair. And if we had more time, we could really dive into that. I'm just trying to suggest a little bit of that with the way that I'm adding these kind of little waves in here. And even in these solid areas, just kind of coming down because the paint has texture and when it dries, I might not have color there suggesting that, but it might hit the light in a certain way that people see all these little waves. I'm just going to take this brown and just go over, add some shading in here. Probably have to use another, like a, just a little bit more blue to do this satisfactorily, but. Wow, see, now that's so much darker now, I'm like, oh, I don't know, I, I might have to do a little more to the face after all. It doesn't surprise me that that happened, it's just, especially when you're up against the clock, like, oh, I thought I was closer than I am, ay ay ay. Right, because now look look how flat her face all of a sudden feels. Now that everything else, the, we've bumped up the contrast radically everywhere else except the face, now the face feels like it needs more love. I'm taking this brown and putting it on the fingers. We're doing a little outlining on the fingers. I felt like that purple that I used for some of the shading had kind of given the hands a bit of like a a 
know, but they looked a little too cold, like a, a dead body or something. So, just a quick little run over with them. See if I can get away with using this brown to do a bit of shading in here. Okay. Yeah, I do need to do work on the face again. Darn it! Okay. Um, what can I... Before I use the blow dryer, I'm going to just take some of my darker paint that I still got left over, scrub a little bit of that on my brush. Let's just do a bit of work on some of these darker lines just to fill in the pupils. Hardly noticeable work, but okay. Now what I'm going to do, blow dry this, and then I'm going to do a little bit of a last few passes with a little bit darker on the face, and then we'll be done. Okay.
see Paula, you're saying, I don't see the Apple Pay or the uh, Super Chat. That's funny, it disappeared. Uh, I did see something from YouTube. I have to file my YouTube taxes, so that's what, probably why you can't donate. But if uh, if you do want to make a donation, you can use PayPal. There's a link below, or you can contact me directly through Facebook or my website. The links are below there, and you can send me an e-transfer or a check or um, a very docile snow leopard. Uh, we have a backyard, so... Um, but, I mean, I should probably check with my wife first to see if we need any uh, large endangered animals. <laughs> um, probably not, uh, but, um, okay. So, I just need to darken that face. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to mix a skin tone again. So to make the skin tone, we take... Uh, I need some more paint here. Oh, that was a little m more than I needed, but... We'll take our warm yellow. Right? We're going to take our warm red. Let's put that to the side. We're going to take our warm blue. Mix it together. Beautiful. We're going to be going darker pretty quickly, so I'm not going to worry about um, making it perfect. Put this. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of white in here. The white's going to dull it down a little bit much, Michael. on the yellow side of things. Let's warm it up. Now it's a little bit peachy. <laughs> this gets a little bit back and forth, back and forth, right? Okay. So that's much warmer than it was before, but we want to make it darker. So uh, you know what? I'm just going to mix uh, the same skin tone that we had before in case I want to use it. Since we're at this point in the painting. Okay, so that's good. This is more like our kind of highlights. It's a little bit warmer of a color. In fact, I could if I wanted. Right now, things kind of look a little bit yellowy. I could use this color to do a glaze over all of the facial features and just warm it up, but um, I'm not going to do that right now. We're on the home stretch here, so... Just blending, going into some of my darker colors I still have on my palette here. much darker color again right and I'm going to use this for some of the darkest parts on that face it needs a bit more Red. I'm going to take a bit of cool red. So 
So we've kind of got like a really dark, or a kind of a reddish gray here, which is perfect because we can use, we're going to blend these together with our um, the skin tone. I just need a smaller brush. So I'm, I'm just kind of taking a little bit of both. I got my skin tone and my darker color. I'm going to use a lot of slow dry medium here. So right near the end. And the, right near the end is where all the mistakes happen. All your car accidents happen right when you're close to home. So slow dry medium is going to just give us, it's like in a little bit of an insurance policy that if we make a mistake, we can just um, uh, wipe it away. Sorry, putting this back up here. Okay, I'm going to let that dry while that's drying. I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight on the face. And so I'm going to take my the same paint. I'm adding a little bit of white. I'm actually going to go right along the nose, kind of go over... Hey, that's...
So I just put a little bit of yellow into the paint. Or just kind of warming it up ever so slightly. This is warm yellow. And I can even go over top of some of the darker areas too. Sure, this was the smartest idea, Michael, but because now I gotta kinda carry it through other parts of the painting. So what I'm doing, I, I just was feeling that the skin was a little too yellow or too, uh, yeah, like really, really pale yellow. So I've added, uh, just sort of warming it up a little bit, very subtle. I talked about maybe th this was an option you could do a while ago, and so now I'm actually doing it just to give a little more life back into her body, which is seeming a little bit too cold. Okay, now I'm gonna darken her hair. get done as soon as possible here. You know what? I'm going to take this darker brown I mixed earlier glazing fluid. I'm just going to darken this whole sleeve.
Okay, so for the hair, to darken this hair, what I'm going to do, take... Uh, do I have any... Uh, I don't have any more warm blues, but we'll use some cool blue. I do need a bit of warm blue here. Not much of it. Cool blue, warm blue. Ooh, it's nice. Some red in here. It's gonna make it go brown from blue. And I'm gonna add just a bit of yellow. So it's quite dark now. Slow dry medium in here. And then let's take this. Just going into the hair. in the way. Now this is like kind of her shawl I think part of this back here that's kind of over her forehead. As I mentioned, I've kind of omitted it just because of time, but if you wanted, you could add that in there.
Okay. Almost, almost done here. I think I might just leave the veil a pencil line rather than trying to do any work on it. I do need to darken some of the shadows in the face. Okay, so I'm going to take slow dry medium, this dark color that I've got, and let's just see if I can get some right off of my brush. I have any, just taking my dirty brush, rubbing it into here. Let's get just a little bit of that color in there. So that we can do a little bit of glazing, darkening some of this again. Is that you, Palash? Wow, you're, uh, it's been a while since we've seen you. I was wondering what happened to you. It's great to, to see you popping in and saying hello again. You're one of the originals, Palash. You were here with me for a long time.
Let's get a little more red on these lips. Help make it a little bit more feminine. I'm gonna have to blow dry that and come back to it. Part of me just thinks it's done. I mean, again, I, I could work on it some more, but I don't know. It's one of these, I, it might be helpful to kind of just <laughs> like stop painting for a bit. Um, it's hard to wonder how it looks on camera. I feel like that's pretty good for what three and a half hours of painting we painted the Mona Lisa I don't know I think, I think I can live with that oh I see I'm warping <laughs> my cutting mat here with the hairdryer blowing on it all the time hmm. let's just go into this a little bit more. Yeah, you know what, I'm like, as I look at it, there are some, like, quite major differences between the original and this.
but I think if it's going to live on its own, I need to leave it alone <laughs> and stop trying to make it look like the original. Okay. As my grandfather used to say, good enough for government work. <laughs> okay. Mining. Or your name. What's today? March. You can put the original Italian spelling. In there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mr. Guillory, is that how you say your last name, Josh? Uh, <laughs> Laurie says it looks easy until you try to do it. Um, it took a little bit of time, you know, a little bit of finagling around. It's this is, this is the most difficult painting we are ever going to do, right? If you're just joining me and you're like, oh my goodness, this is an intro to painting class. This was maybe a little bit more for me. It's this was sort of like my end game chess move, or uh, uh, it's like. Okay, we've been, I've been teaching people how to paint all these other paintings. Many of them are on the simpler side of things because um, there was only so much we can do in a shorter period of time. Like this is now four hours and 15 that the stream's been on. But I try to find paintings that are that you can do a really good job on in four hours, right? And you don't have to worry about doing too much more afterwards or ideally you don't have to do any more afterwards. This is the most difficult one we will ever do, right? So if you're like, oh my goodness, this is the kind of thing we're doing every every <laughs> couple days. I don't know. This is the most difficult thing we're going to do. Um, everything else is easier. In fact, next class, we're going to do a painting by Sherry Boyle, who is, I would say, probably the best, live, like the greatest living Canadian artist. I'd have to think about it, but just off the top of my head, I can't, or at least in terms of, uh, she's actually, we're going to do a painting of hers, but she's really most famous for her sculptures. Um, and she's like, I don't know how old she must be. She's maybe in her 40s, maybe early 50s. I'd have, I, I can't, I have to take a look, but she's on the little bit younger side and you're, we'll see all of her work, but it's going to be a, a welcome alternative to this painting. It's going to be a breath of fresh air. If you found this like was a little overwhelming, the next painting we're going to do is a lot, a lot easier um, and very colorful. Whereas this one has been, you know, much more muted colors because that's all Leonardo had at the time. Very, very basic earthy tones, which we've managed to get here. So we actually had to there's no bright colors in this painting. We had to dull the painting down dramatically to get to the brightest colors that he had available to him, right? So, and, you know, I feel pretty good about it, right? Again, we, I, if I was going to spend more time, what I would do is, is continue to darken around the face and, and get a little more contrast there, but that could take me another hour to do, and I feel like at this point, I'm pretty happy with, with the way things are. So, if um, if you found today's episode or any of the things that I've done over the past while helpful, I would love it if you liked the channel, if you subscribe to the channel, or like this video, subscribe to the channel. 
Um, also, you know, the things that are very helpful, I know if you want to, to give a small donation, large donation, PayPal, send me an email, do an e-transfer. Uh, if you want my email address, go to the Facebook page, send me a message, join the Facebook group, that's also down there, um, or my website. But also something, if you don't have any money, you don't want to contribute any money, I totally understand. Um, what would be really helpful is if you looked at some of the previous videos that we've done. We've done now 150. Today's episode 150. I've been at this for a while. If you've uh, enjoyed some of the previous videos, is to go back and like and comment on previous videos. That just helps you know, the YouTube algorithm go up. And I know you probably watched the live stream, but as you're watching some of those previous videos, leave a comment in the comment section below um, responding to things that I said or, you know, your feedback, all those other kinds of things. That's really helpful because there's a lot of people who are only just starting to watch these episodes and they, you know, episodes we filmed back in, you know, May or July of last year, the painting class, which began in September. So if you're watching those and you leave a little comment, um, if you like, etc., that helps me big time. Right? And it doesn't cost you a penny except just a couple of extra minutes of your time. So, Okay, everybody. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. It's been fantastic fun painting the most famous painting on Earth. And I think we did a pretty good job of it in three hours. So enjoy the rest of your time. We'll see you on Thursday for our Paint the News class, too. And uh, But that's a whole other thing. We'll talk to you soon, everybody. Good night.